All right, welcome everybody. I got another God one for you today. This one feels like a really God one. This is really, really, really God one. Uh, it's not going to be a popular one with the planet, but it seems like none of my messages really are. Uh, <laughs> I noticed I, I had a, you know, one of my shorts. There was like 500 views, like 600 views on it uh, yesterday. And uh, the, it's all, the only comments that I get are just how horrible my messages are and how stupid I am. And <laughs> it's pretty, pretty fun. It's got like, bro's got like 500 dislikes to like five likes. <laughs> That's a God sign right there. No ear tickling, no ear tickling going on in these parts. All right, so uh, this is going to be one of those. The uh, world is not going to want to hear this one. Uh, and it is the truth. The truth will set you free, but it'll piss you off first. So who's ready for some truth? Say aye. All right, so this one is called Real Lies versus Real Eyes. So you're going to pick. Is it going to be real lies? Are you going to be looking through real lies, lies that seem real to you, like that you've made more real than real? What you believe to be true is true for you, even if it's bullshit, and you can believe a lie and make it more real than real. So are you going to be looking through real lies, or are you going to be looking through Real eyes and see what's actually there. Yeah, real eyes. Real eyes. Ready for some real eyes? You ready to realize your real eyes? Who's ready to realize your real eyes? Say aye. All right, and then the subtitle is Victims Are Ruling the World. So, right row. Yeah. Victims are ruling the world. And pretending like they're not. <laughs> they're, they're convincing themselves and other people that they have no power that they're getting, just getting the short end of the stick, but that are actually in, com in com complete control. So, um, I was uh, chatting with somebody the other day and they accused me of living in an ivory tower. And uh, I'm like, well, let me go look that up. Let me, before, I, before I reject what you say, let me uh, go check and see. Let me go look up, see what you're talking about. What, what is an ivory tower? So I looked it up. Ivory tower is a place or an atmosphere where people are happily cut off from the rest of the world. If you're in an ivory tower, you live in a world of ideas separate from the realities of most people's lives. I'm like, oh, well, shit, okay, yeah, that's, you, you are correct, sir. And then I invited him to come join me. I'm like, hey, would you like to, be, <laughs> yes, you are correct, you've, you've spotted, you've, uh, you've discerned me correctly, sir. Would you like to continue living in the world full of shit, or would you like to come on up into the ivory tower where we get to experience peace, love, and joy, heaven on earth, and... Uh, He's like, well, yeah, dude, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I guess I'd like to go. <laughs> like, all right, well, then uh, you're going to have to stop believing what you believe, and you're going to have to start believing what I believe, because here it is again. It's a, a place or an atmosphere where people are happily cut off, what, happily cut off from the rest of the world. <laughs> it's not like I'm, oh, no, I'm desert. Like uh, Now, there were times where I'm like, you know, I wasn't in an ivory tower because I wasn't happily cut off from the rest of the world. Now I'm like very, I'm very happy that I'm, you know, the, that it, it's like I've severed, I've severed my resonance with lies and sin and suffering. It's no longer, I no longer have any need for lies and sin and suffering. God says, um, the only thing I ask you to sacrifice is your suffering. I can't, I, I did a lot of suffering to finally sacrifice my suffering. So I, I've laid it on the altar. Now I no longer resonate within or without with suffering. And uh, so I'm happily cut off from the rest of the world. So if you're living in an ivory tower, you're living a world of ideas separate from the realities of most people's lives. So you're going to need new ideas. If you'd like to live in the heaven on earth, then you're going to have to have ideas that are different from the, the majority because uh, if you're thinking and doing the same thing everyone else is thinking and doing, then you're going to be receiving and experiencing all the same things everyone is receiving and experiencing. Right now, most people are receiving and experiencing lies and the fruits thereof. So, um, so who here is tired of living in a world full of sin and suffering? Say aye. aye. Who here is done with living in a world full of sin and suffering? Say aye. aye. Okay. If, uh, if you do not agree with that, then go ahead and click off now and go enjoy your sin or hate, enjoy or hate or whatever you're doing with your sin and suffering. Go proceed with that because if you, uh, if you stick around here too long, you will not be able to unsee behind the curtain. I'm about to show you behind the curtain. You will no longer be able to plead ignorance because you can still suffer for a really long time right now and plead ignorance. 
But what I'm about to share with you, you will no longer be able to plead ignorance. You will have seen behind the curtain, and you won't be able to put the genie back in the bottle. So this is my fair warning to you. If you would like to remain victim of circumstance, if you would like to continue experiencing uh, sin and suffering, if you'd like to continue living in that world within and or without, then click off now because we are about to remove the veil and you will no longer be able to pretend like you don't know, okay? All right, so who here would lo love, love to live in a world full of peace, love, and joy, say I. Aye. All right, come on with me then. That's, we're heading to the ivory tower. So, yeah. <laughs> so it, it all starts with taking the lies out of your eyes. Out of whose eyes? Mine. Notice I didn't say out of your neighbor's eyes. Notice I didn't say out of the Democrats' eyes or out of the Republicans' eyes or out of the uh, people who have different beliefs with you eyes. We're talking about your eyes. We talked about, uh, I think it was like three weeks ago, it said the, me the message was mind your own damned business. And then I talked about, you know, uh, gracefully remove the microscope out of your neighbor's ass and shove it up yours and start, uh, that's where you need to get started. Uh, start with the man in the mirror. And so that's where it starts. It all starts with the taking the lies out of your eyes. Matthew 7, 5 says, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eyes and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Uh, <laughs> it was so wild. Like I'm, there's this, this guy that so the guy that I was chatting with that said I li lived in an ivory tower, how I met him, because I was talking with an old, old friend of mine on Facebook, and, you know, he had, some, he had some very strong things to say about, you know, Jesus and stuff like that. I'm like, well, you know, maybe you can consider some, <laughs> maybe a different perspective. He starts getting all angry. I'm like, well, you know, why are you so angry? <laughs> Obviously, there's some pain right there. And he starts getting even more angry as I start point, pointing at the pain that's, that's coming to the surface. And he like completely like shuts me down. Like he blocks me and he's like, he deletes my entire comment and blocks me. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. But his whole thing is all about um, like non-dualism. Like he's like, us versus them people are creating division and destroying the world. I'm like, uh, I, not, uh, you, you realize that you're us versus them right now, right? You're, you're, the, you're a, us being the uh, non-dualist versus them, the dualists. You, you see that, right? He's like, that's not, I'm not doing the same thing they're doing. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> Carry on then. <laughs> it's just the craziest thing, like how people are just like, just, I just can't even, I'm like, I'm just letting you know, I, I'm doing it. I'm just letting you know, like, I'm, I got us versus them, there's just them going on. I mean, it's not like really a verse. I'm not fighting any, anyone, but I do have a complete, uh, I have a perspective that's different than other people's perspective, but I'm not in denial of that. I'm completely cool with that. That's not a problem for me. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> and it just, he just got super triggered and literally, removed my comment and said, if you comment ever again, then I'm just going to keep removing all of your comments. And so I just put a laughy face on his comment. <laughs> and he'd have to remove his comment to remove my laughy face. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I'm like, I got, I slipped away. And he was like, he's like, you always got to get the last word. <laughs> so I put the laughy face. In it. <laughs> oh, goodness. I have a blasty blast with uh, people still in the matrix. So everybody say, I'm realizing that I saw through eyes packed with lies. I'm realizing that I saw through lies and eyes packed with lies. say, I'm giving up lies that seem real. So I can have eyes that see what is real. I'm, leave, I'm leaving the dungeon of lies and entering the tower of truth. Yeah, so you're so powerful if you think you're not, you're not, even though you still are. That's pretty wild, huh? It's so powerful if you think you're not, you're not, even though you still are. That's impossible, yet somehow humanity has pulled it off. We've been swimming in a sea of psychosis. That was a phrase that came through my brother, uh, the king of sea of psychosis, uh, David. Uh, my, brother, my brother David over there. I've swam in his sea of psychosis, but I'm, I get, I'm like doing a little backstrokes in it now. Like I can actually go swim in his sea of psychosis and have a blast in there now. It's like, it's really fun. I'll get a margarita, <laughs> just enjoy it. 
So, uh, <laughs> I was swimming in a sea of psychosis, uh, and, and everybody's like, it's like people just don't even see it. I mean, people are literally walking around saying, I'm a cat, I'm a cat. <laughs> like, and you're, and you're like, have to agree with them or else there's something wrong with you. Now, the person saying that I'm a cat or a big, a dude with a big dong is like, I'm a woman. Like, and you're supposed to say, yes, you're a woman or else there's something wrong with you. Like, uh, <laughs> That's, that's, like, that's so, psychosis, that's psychotic. And it's doubly psychotic to agree with the, the psychotic, with what? And like, we're literally in that old world in Babylon, which I don't, I don't live there anymore, but in Babylon, you literally can go to jail for telling a, a dude with a dong that he's a dude if he says, I'm a woman. Now, fear comforts dysfunction, love confronts dysfunction. I'm, now, we're not here to judge anybody, but like, use some discernment, y'all. Look with some real eye. Take the lies out of your eyes and look at what's real. Like, that's, this is reality right here. You know, if you, if you think there's no difference between men and women, go try and milk a bull. It's, it's different, completely different. That's completely different milk going to come out of those udders. So, um, we were playing, the, there's a game we play down here called the Werewolf. We got a couple games that we play. We play were Werewolf, we play uh, Bad People, and, so, and Muffin Top. <laughs> and, uh, um, but we play these games because, again, you face it within or without, by chance or by choice. The most successful general chooses the time and the place for the battle. You got, like in the Catholic Church, you got all these pedophiles, like all these people that are trying to be perfect and presenting. They, they got this false identity, this per false perfect identity uh, that is actually a cage for what's going on inside of them. And they're like trying to make the identity more and more real, but they're suppressing the aspects of them that actually still is alive and still is real inside of them. And then that, what's in them starts to squirt out. And all of a sudden they'll do something really dysfunctional, like, you know, go have sex, like a dude having sex with a little boy. Like, that's, that's crazy. And so... What we do here is we put the fun in dysfunction because everybody's dysfunctional, but everybody's pretending like they're not because they think that they wouldn't be worthy of love if, they were, if their dysfunction were exposed. And, you know, you're not actually worthy of love, but you are worth it. How do we know? Because Jesus showed up and hung on a cross because you're worth it. And uh, so we put the fun in dysfunction because, you know, in the frequency chart, you got shame, guilt, and apathy are down at the bottom. And people are so ashamed of what's going on inside of them, they try to put on these masks. They try to cover it up and hide it. But what we do is we just have a little blasty blast with it. We, like, you know, have, make, we, we, it's like we laugh with the people about their dysfunction. And once that happens, it comes to the light. And then it just kind of, psh, and it just dissolves. And then they, you know, like people don't, it's not in them anymore. Resistance breeds persistence. What you fight against, you create. And so people are no longer fighting against what's going on inside of themselves. They bring it out. What you, what you hide within you is going to control you, but what you bring out will liberate you. And so we, we, we liberate it. We bring it all out without any sort of judgment and with a bunch of fun. And then psh, it just goes away. And then all of a sudden the people are actually functioning without all this dys dysfunctional stuff going on inside of them. Um, so, but one of the games though, and also we do it uh, Kind of another way, thing we do, like when people will play the games with new people show up, so we could uh, kind of start, you could see what their ego does. Like the game Werewolf, you're, on the game Werewolf, some, some people, like you, you get handed cards, and some people are werewolves, and some people are villagers. And so it, it, we, there's a time where it's like, okay, in the game you go to sleep, everybody goes to sleep, but the werewolves wake up, and then they kill somebody. And then everybody goes, you know, everybody wakes up for the next day and then uh, we find out who the werewolves killed. And then the game is to try to figure out who the well werewolves are so you can kill them. So they, don't st so they stop killing the, the villagers. But the werewolves, if the werewolves say, I'm a werewolf, then we're going to know who they are and you're going you're to kill the werewolf and then they, they lose the game. And so you really get to see like some pe people are really good liars. <laughs> like, holy crap, that was a good lie. That was impressive. Some people are very cr shitty liars. And you're like, uh, okay, that, that's somebody I can trust right there. <laughs> and so it gives you a good, uh, gives you a good 
uh, a good thumb on, you know, it, it, you, we get to watch in a game, we get to watch how the ego would work in a game, like how it's working in the game when they're not on guard trying to, you know, uh, sh- trying to hide what they're doing. We can see it right there and, in, 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 you know, cl- clearly without anybody, you know, trying to hide it. They're just playing the game. And so, uh, but in the game Werewolf, once you get killed, now you're in the afterlife. You don't get to play the game anymore. The game's over for you. So you're in the afterlife. And nobody wants to get killed because they want to keep playing the game. Like, no, no, don't kill. Oh, man, you killed me. And so now you're, now you're not in the game and you can't, you can't talk to the people anymore. You're in the afterlife. And so the last, the last game we played, I was the first one to get killed. I'm like, oh, man. I mean, I'm just, and then I'm sitting there, but I'm still sitting at the table and watching everybody else play the game. And turns out it's like even more fun to watch the game from the afterlife than it is to be in the game. Because when everybody goes to sleep and the werewolves wake up and kill, I'm in the afterlife, I get to see who the werewolves are. And then, you'll, and then the other people, there's different roles. Some people are like, some, some's the seer, somebody's the witch, some's the doctor, and all, they all wake up. So I get to know who everybody is. Once I'm in the afterlife, now I don't get to say anything to the people that are still in the game, but I get to see what's happening in the game. So I get to watch all the people playing their roles and and, and I get to watch what everybody's doing and how they're doing it. And it's really entertaining to get to watch. So it's like, it's like little, you know, the little egos are there and they're still in the game. So nobody, they don't have the, 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 higher, the higher vision. They can't see from the higher perspective because you can't see the picture when you're inside of it. So when they're still in the game, they're still inside the picture. So they can't see what's happening from all the other perspectives. But once you, you're, once you die, once you get killed, you're in the afterlife still sitting there, but watching because you get to know who everybody is. The, the people don't know who each other are, but you, the dead people, get to know who everybody is. Well, then somebody else gets killed, and then like, boop, now there's another person in the afterlife. You're like, hey, now, now there's like, you know, you get to hang out with the other people in the afterlife. And we're like, hey, look, do you see, you get to see, we get to watch all the people doing their, their stupid stuff. And, you know, uh, but it's just, it's just a game. But, but you're, you watch the people... It's not just a game for them. Like Cole, man, he'll get pissed, man. This dude did, when he's playing a game, it ain't a game for Cole, man. He's like about to whip somebody's ass because they said something or they're, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> but they like get so involved in the game. And, but when you're dead, you realize it's not, a, it's just, it was just a game. It wasn't a big deal. What, what are you left? What are you? A brand new like that. <laughs> yeah, Cole getting sucked into the game. Yeah, it ain't no game for Cole, man. He's in that sucker. Like he goes all the way. <laughs> He gets, he gets lost in the game. But that's what life is. It's just this game that we get lost in. And from this high, from the, in the afterlife, so I've, I've, I've basically uh, transcended the, the game. Uh, so I see from a higher perspective now because I'm, I've stepped outside of my ego and you know, I work with all these other people's egos and, I, and I, get to see all, I get to see what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They think it's them. Like people literally, they've identified with their ego. They don't even know it's their ego. They think it's them. And they're just fighting for these lies that they don't even know is lies. Because people, what people be- believe is true, they, they, they believe the thing because they think it's true. Like you don't, uh, believe, uh, you don't believe things that you don't think are true. The reason you believe it is because you think it's true. And once you believe it, it is, it is true for you. And now you're locked inside of this thing, this answer even if the answer is a lie, you believe that it's true, even if it's a lie, and now it's true for you. And so people are like, you need to really respect and honor my truth. I'm like, uh, I literally have the website. Now this might offend some, some of y'all here and check inside of yourself, get the lie out of your eye if this offends you. Uh, why, why does it offend you? But the website, I bought the website, fuckyourtruth.com. I literally have fuckyourtruth.com. Because, Chris, yeah, Chris liked that, yeah. Because, because it doesn't say your truth will set you free. It says the truth will set you free. Your truth will imprison you. Like if you have, a, if you have your own unique truth, that means your, your truth is a lie because there's only the truth and the truth is true for all of us. So I'm not going to respect your truth. I'm going to have fun with your truth. I'm going I'm to be making fun of your truth. I'm going <laughs> to have a blast with, with your truth. If once, once I see that your truth is a lie, 
Because I'm just having a, I'm put, I'm putting, I'm just having a game of it. It's because it's just a game. You've just gotten sucked into the game and it's not real. And so I can watch the people stuck inside of their games and I just have a little blast with it. And I'm like in the afterlife now. And I get to see from a higher perspective what the people can't even see because they're, they're, still, they're still in it. I've already died. So there's a death and a resurrection. I died and resurrected. Now I'm on earth, uh, but I'm in the world and not of it. Every now and again, I'll be sitting there in the game and the game will get, will get so engaging that I'll, like, I'll, I'll fall back asleep for a second and I'll be in the game for a second. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, you know, it's very rare that I'll, that I'll go and stay, I'll be actually in the game. And uh, if I am there, I'm not there for very long. But yeah, pretty good liar. Okay. So, uh, um, so yeah, werewolf game. You don't have, you, you don't want to die because it won't be fun. But it's even more fun in the afterlife, watching everyone else play and not having any clue what is actually happening. So. What's happening is everyone, are, the, everyone is a child of God. So there's your ideal self in your mind, your real self in your emotions, and then your true self in your heart. That's who you truly are. Your ideal self is the, is the fictional character, the false, the false identity that you created because you didn't think that you were worthy of love and you tried to figure out who to become that the world would, would love. Who will my daddy love? Who will my mommy love? Who will my, my children love? Who, and, you just, and you started crafting this identity. You keep altering yourself. And the Bible says, do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's supposed to come from the inside out. But instead, what we did is we're looking at the world and, and getting information about the world and saying, who should I be so that I, the, so that I can have a better life in this world? And if that's your goal, is to say, who should I be so I can have a better life in this world? You have literally betrayed your home. You have betrayed God. You've left your home, which is not this world. Your home is the kingdom of God. And they're literally completely opposing each other. So if you're trying to figure out who you need to be so that you can have a better life in this world, you're doing it completely backwards. Uh, um, you know, there's the quote that if you aim for heaven, you'll get the earth thrown in. But if you aim for earth, you're going to lose both. Because the only way to get earth without heaven, uh, you can't have earth without heaven. Earth will have you. And so what good is it to gain the world but lose your soul? It's no good. And so um, what everybody has done is how they got sucked into the game so to have become who they're not. So there's your ideal self. That's who you're not. Your real self is how you really feel when you're interacting with the world and it's like re you, you, you smack into reality and all of a sudden you're like, ow, oh, that hurts. But the reason that it hurt is because you had a lie in your eye. You believed that it wasn't supposed to happen. You, suffering comes from resisting what is. So you had a false perspective that this was not supposed to happen. There was a pro all preferences are programming. So you got programmed from pro probably your parents to per believe like blueprints on what, what is supposed to happen. Like I was programmed by my parents that death was a bad thing because my parents knew that my, my brother had muscular dystrophy and they knew he was going to die at a young age. So they were preparing me. I remember like at three, four years old, I'm already getting prepared for my brother to die at a young age. And it's like, it's the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. I'm like, oh, so prepare for the worst thing that's ever going to possibly happen. But it's not a big deal for somebody to die. That's what bodies are meant to do. Like the bodies, the, what do bodies do? They they grow up and then they grow down. <laughs> they live and then they die. That's what a body does. They're temporal. They're just for time. That's what they do. It's not a big deal. But, for, but if, you're, if you got a lie in your eye, it's a huge deal. Oh my God, the body just died. But you think the body is them, but they're not their body. You're not your body. And so uh, I was programmed on, on we're, in these, and we're swimming in the sea of psychosis. We're programmed believing things are supposed to be different than, than, they, than they are and in resistance to reality, which is creating our suffering, which creates a victim. And so all of us start out as victims. Uh, the, uh, that's, that's the first delusion. Some of us split off and add another delusion on top of it to become a hero. Well, now all of us do all of these to some degree, but the core is the victim. But so how was Batman born? It was Bruce Wayne. He was a little boy. He was, you know, walking in, down the street with his parents, and his parents get killed. And what does little Bruce Wayne, the little boy, feel like in that moment? It feels like a victim. It feels like a victim. 
And it, and it, he's uh, and, and like, I've got to take, I, okay, the law didn't fix this, so I'm going to have to take this into my own hands. So he felt like a victim, and because he didn't want to feel like a victim, what did he become? A hero. So he built a hero, a, a superhero. So Bruce Wayne got stuck in a little box, like a little pack, like a, like a, 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 a little cage, a tower. Uh, he got stuck in a little tower. Not an ivory tower where he's actually in peace and love and joy, but a, in a, a tower of protection. So he, Batman, stuck Bruce Wayne in the little tower to protect Bruce Wayne. So then th throughout Bruce Wayne's life, he's, he's still living as Bruce Wayne, but he's never actually Bruce Wayne. He doesn't ever get to experience Bruce Wayne's life because he knows he's Batman. I'm actually Batman. I can't be Bruce Wayne because Bruce Wayne uh, uh, is, is a victim and I got to protect him. And so Batman, so, so he's just sitting there all the time just going through the motions, waiting for the next back sit, back sit, bat signal to show up. And go, oh, oh it's time for, time for me to shine. And so, but the hero is just a double delusion because the only reason you would ever be a hero is because you perceive there's a such thing as victims. So, so it's doubly delusional. Now, so now you've got, you got to undo the hero and then, and then undo the victim. Like you've got to at first admit that you're a victim, but the hero can't even get to the victim because he can't get to the victim inside of himself because the, the hero is being played by victims on the outside of himself. It appears without, though it is within. And the hero is so worried about the, what's going on with the victims. His only job is what's going on with the victims. Always watching the victims. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Not realizing that he's a victim. Like, you okay, victim? You okay, victim? You okay? Not realizing it's just a mirror, but, and, but, then, the, uh, but then the villain always shows up. The only re way Batman can have any value is if there's villains. If there's no villains, there's no value for the, for the hero, correct? So when, when the Joker shows up, all right, I'm needed now. And so the hero thinks that he's loved for what he does, not for who he is, because he doesn't think that he's, because he's just a worthless victim that God gave up on. And so I'm going to build something that's actually got value, my hero. And so he builds this hero that has value, and he thinks he's loved for what he does. But... We're not loved for what we do, we're loved for who we are. But we don't even know who we are because we gave up who we are for what we do. We turn from human beings to human doings. And so when the Joker shows up, uh, it's all right, it's time. So Batman's role is to fight the Joker, is to fight the villain. And so now, but the victim is just sitting there watching the two fight over here, like who, 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 why are, why is the hero and the vi villain fighting? They're fighting over the victim. Who's, whose victim is this? This is my victim. I'm going to win the prize of the victim. The victim's going to, the victim's going to be with me. If the villain wins, then the victim goes with the villain. Ah, they goes in the victim's cage. If the hero wins, the victim goes in the hero's cage as well, but it's a cage that doesn't look like a cage. You know you're in the, in the villain's cage, but you don't know you're in the, the hero's cage. And so, uh, but it's still just a cage because the hero says, why would somebody want me if they don't need me? So the, the, the hero's got the need to be needed because he doesn't know how to be loved. Okay, everybody still following this? So, um, but the victim's controlling the whole thing. The victim inside of Bruce has built Batman. The victim inside of the Joker has built the Joker. Because the Joker was just a victim one time. At some point, he was just a little boy, just an innocent little boy. And then he got hurt too, became the victim. And he's like, never again will anybody hurt me like that. And he goes for, both of them are actually going for revenge. It's still the same thing, but they're just taking different paths to do the same thing. It's the exact same thing. And the, and the, the, the victims out there will get both of them to dance. He's going to get the, it's going to get the hero to dance by the hero's judgment on the, the, the villain. The hero's biggest fear, I always thought, because I was a highly trained hero, so the victim, and then I, I was doubly delusional because I actually thought that I was a hero. I thought I was, I, I literally thought that I could save people. Like, I was, I was dead certain that I could save people. Has anybody here ever been dead certain that you could save people? <laughs> I'm going to make you happy if it kills me. Anybody ever, I'm going to make you happy if it kills me. Anybody ever had that one? Who, how many of y'all died? <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, uh, but the, ha- the, the victims out there are really just the victims in here, but the, the, vi- the victim is born because he's, judge- he's blaming God. He's judge- er, the, the hero is born because of his judgment on God, and he calls God the villain. God, you should have been there. You weren't there, so I'm going to take it in my own hands. You should have been there. This was not supposed to happen. You should have been there. You should have protected me. You didn't, so you're a jerk, so now we're completely upside down because we're calling God evil, calling God bad, calling God wrong, and I'm going to be the judge, the juror, and the executioner. I'm going to take it in my own hands. And so it's the villain, the, vi- the hero's judgment on God is what makes the, uh, as the villain. So it's actually the hero's judgment on villains is what makes the hero birth, be born. But guess what that actually makes the hero? If the hero is judging God, what does that actually make the hero? A villain! The ultimate villain. The hero is the, is the ultimate villain. Because he's trying to do job, uh, God's job. See, there was a time in my life where I, I, I actually thought that I could make people happy. That, I literally believed it. I was playing God. I, had the, the, I thought that I was their savior because I was evangelist atheist. So there was no God, so it was only me. So I'm like trying to put the weight of the world on my shoulders. I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. I'll, I'll save you. And I believed that I could save people. And they believed it too, which I was in between them and God. I was blocking them from actually going to the only place they could have got saved, which was God. So I was the ultimate villain as a hero. Who can relate? So, but it's, so the, the victim will get the hero to dance because the hero will, or the victim will call the hero if the hero does not save the victim, the victim will call the hero a villain. Now, when the hero heroes, the hero actually is a villain, but they're delusional. They got lies in their eyes. They can't even see that they're being a villain when, when they're heroing. But their judgment on the villain the, the victim will play that against you. Say, you, if, you don't be the, if you don't save me from the villain, and the villain might be a person, it might be a situation, it might be a sickness, whatever their thing is, whatever the villain is, it, it, you know, the, the, the victim will play the hero against that. Like, if you don't save me from this, you are the villain. You're the ultimate villain. Well, I don't want to be the ultimate villain. I, so I don't want to be judged like that. So I'll get back, I'll, I'll hop on and I'll dance again. And so that's what keeps the cycle going. Now, so again, the victims are ruling the world. The victim's favorite tool, anybody know what the victim's favorite tool is? Huh? Well, yeah, the tool, the favorite, the hero's, the victim's favorite tool is a hero, yes. <laughs> but blame. The blame, they point the finger. It's your fault. Your fault. They'll point that, but they'll point like, see, what they'll do is they'll aim at a, at a villain. They're like, ah, your fault. And then they look over at a hero. You, look, it's their fault. Now, they also, the, the hero knows that if the, if, if the hero doesn't believe the victim, that it's that villain's fault, and then the, the hero doesn't come save the victim from that villain over there, then the hero knows that that finger is about to turn from the villain, oh, oh, it's not, oh, it's not their fault? Oh, then whose fault? Oh, then it's your fault. Ah! So they're pointing the finger, right? The, vi- the victim's biggest tool is their finger. They'll point the finger, who's to blame? And so uh, that's, their, that's their favorite tool, and their best way to deploy it is with their stupid story that stupid people fall for. I remember there was this lady, man, it was... Uh, uh, this was like several years ago, this lady, she was just, just in, just miserable. She's just one of, probably, probably one of the most miserable people I've ever met in my entire life. But every time she met anybody, she, you already know who I'm talking about. Like Mel, it's like, oh, she knows who I'm talking about because she got you, right? <laughs> She'll come in and she would tell her stupid story. Now, it wasn't stupid to her and it wasn't stupid to stupid people that fell for it. Uh, they, they were like, oh my God, because it, it was the story about her grandchild getting slaughtered, like somebody coming into the bathroom and busting the door open and chopping her grandson into little pieces, like, what the fuck are you doing? And then she would like, literally, she'd, the moment she'd meet you, she'd go into her stupid story. 
about this grandson getting slaughtered. Like, who, nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> but so she'll, and she'll hook you in there and make you feel like her, her goal is to make you feel guilty or ashamed. If, like if you walk away, if you even turn away, oh, what is wrong? You don't care? You don't care? If you even, if you even stop listening for half a second, you're the most worthless piece of shit that's ever existed. And then, but if she realizes it's not working, then like literally she'll go right to the very next person, like three feet away and start, start from the, start from, like take it from the top. And she'll say the whole story all over again, take it from the top, the exact same story, just and she's got it all dialed in. She knows how to say her stupid story. And she'll say, and then if she gets this one hooked, she'll go, uh, she'll, her next job, go to the next person. And it's literally all she has is a stupid story. Like she doesn't even exist anymore. There is no relationship. There's no, you don't get to be with her. You just, it's just her stupid story. And she takes it to every single person and hooks people with her stupid story. Anybody ever met somebody like that before? Anybody ever been somebody like that before? Telling your stupid story over and over and over? (laughs) If there's some victims watching on, there's no victims here, I don't believe, but if there's any victims watching on YouTube right now, they are pissed. (laughs) How dare you? uh, Or or some heroes, which are, which heroes, which are actually victims. How dare you? Her little grandson got chopped to pieces and you're calling it a stupid story? Ah, how dare you? They're trying to look, they're trying to do it right now, like pointing the finger. You're the villain! You're the villain! Because you're calling your story stupid about her grandson getting slaughtered! How could you do that? <laughs> well, here's I'm gonna tell you how I can do that. <laughs> Cause I yeah, that's a good short. Oh yeah. I'll definitely get a, I'll definitely get five thousand dislikes on this one. When that, when <laughs> so let me tell you how I do that. I, I care enough to not care. I care enough to not care about your stupid story. Actually, and I care so much that I will call your story stupid. Most people don't care enough about you to call your story stupid because they care so much about the way that you see them that they won't tell you the truth. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Now you could do, you could call somebody's stupid story stupid if you're judging them because you got a stupider story and you're just judging them because you're in competition with their stories. You're, you got stupid stories because you should hear my not, not stupid story. Your story's stupid, but mine's not. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not talking about, so I care enough to not care that uh, like I'm not trying to tell, I'm not telling you you got a stupid story so, so that my story's cooler than your story. I'm telling you that all the stories are stupid. They're all just stupid. I'll share my stories, but I'm only sharing my stories to show you how stupid your stories are because I'm not stuck inside of my stories. I'm liberated. I'm sharing my stories because I'm free. Look, look, I got these stupid stories and I'm out of them. I'm not stuck in the stupid story anymore. Story anymore. I got the lies out of my eyes and now I'm free. I'm free to actually be in the kingdom of God where I get to experience unconditional peace and love and joy and connection and community. I get to, I get to experience what, 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 what the Prince of Peace came and promised. I'm going to give you peace that transcends all understanding. You're not going to understand this. You're not going to understand the peace that I give you because it's not in formation. It's, it's from spirit and the spirit's going to cleanse your lens, but you got to let go of what you think that you know. All right. So a uh, victim's favorite tool is blame and their best way to deploy it is with their stupid story that stupid people fall for. It started in the garden. Adam pointed the finger. Who do you point the finger at? At Eve. It's, it's the woman's fault. And then Eve continued with the story. No, 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 no. Not my fault. It's the serpent's fault. So she blames the serpent. And then the, the serpent stuck with the buck, man. He's like, he didn't got no finger to point. Like, he can't point at nobody. He's like, he's like trying, he's like. <laughs> it ain't working without a finger, man. Yeah, so, so he's all stuck. And now the one to blame, guess, guess, who's got, guess who's ruling the world now? The one who got blamed. Because the one who you're blaming is the one whom you've given your power to. Because I'm a, I'm a weak little worthless victim. They're more, they're all powerful. This one, this one has destroyed my life. Wow. So that's your God. So whoever you blame is who you're, is who you're worshiping. That's who your God is. So this, the victims have the power because Adam and Eve are 
we're created to be kings and queens over creation. We are here to take dominion. Humanity is meant to take dominion, be fruitful and multiply. So we have all the power. Satan, the serpent, the liar has zero power. But there's two little baby victims in the garden perceive themselves as victims of the serpent. And they both, rather than owning, owning up, taking responsibility for their reality, say, hey, I made a mistake. I bit the fruit. I did what you told me not to do. I made a mistake. And coughing up the fur ball, spitting out the fruit, instead of doing that, they pointed the finger and blamed the serpent. And so since that moment, the serpent has ruled the world. But it, it's, the serpent's not ruling the world. The victims are still ruling the world. Adam and Eve are still ruling the world, but the serpent is, is actually controlling the victims, using the victim's power. The, vic the serpent doesn't have any power. The victims have the power, but the serpent getting the victims to believe that they're victims gets them to think that he's got power. The serpent doesn't have any power. He's a lie. He's an illusion. He doesn't even exist, yet he's got all the power because the victims are ruling the world and scapegoating the serpent as if the serpent's doing it all wrong. No, they're the one doing it. We're the ones doing it. And we're, every time you point the finger, you're scapegoating whoever you're pointing at. Saying, they've got my power. No, you're so powerful. If you think you're not, you're not, even though you still are. But you're, whoever you're pointing at, blaming, that's who you have allocated your power to. You've said, I'm not taking responsibility for my reality. They're responsible for my reality. And I'm just going to stay here in my, in my cage where it's comfortable. And they're going to have to deal with all the whatever. I'm not going to deal with anything. I'm just going to lay here and stew in my poo. So um, we played a, uh, we got this game called the blame game where we derived it from a, uh, there's like a little Zen quote or something. It says, those who blame others have a long way to go. Those who blame themselves are halfway there. Those who blame no one have arrived. And so that's the journey from the mind through the emotions to the heart. From mind, your, your ideal self, you're blaming everybody else, but I'm, I'm awesome that they all suck. Real self, oh, actually, I'm a worthless piece of crap. I actually, I suck. That's how you really feel underneath your fake smile. Yes, actually, I'm a piece of crap. I suck. But the truth is, nobody sucks. The truth is, everything's perfect. We're all one. Love is the only thing that exists. God's still on the throne. It's all going according to plan. You can't see the picture in your side of it. You can step outside the picture when you say, not my will, but thine be done. You can actually receive a higher perspective. God's ways are higher than our ways. You can receive the higher ways and you can step outside of the picture and actually get to enjoy the game. So uh, there's a the victim mindset versus the victor mindset. The victim mindset is satanic. It's literally satanic. How you get a victim mi mindset, if you ever feel like a victim, you have, been, you have sold your soul to Satan. Now you can, you can buy it back, or you are, well you can't buy it back, but Jesus has bought it back for you. And if you'll receive... If you'll receive your Savior, then you can receive your, you can, he'll give you your soul back, but he just, re, all he does is removes the sins from your lens. So sin is not an action to be punished, it's a perception to be corrected. So the, the Savior, the Son, can actually cleanse your lens. He can remove the lies out of your eyes and, and, and restore you, help you remember who you are by remembering whose you are that you've always been before you got the lie in your eye. So... But if you have a victim mindset, if you, if you feel like you're a victim of anyone or anything, that means you have a satanic mindset. You've, you're literally worshiping Satan. It's a lie. You're not a victim. You've never been a victim. Only inside of your story were you a victim. Satan sold you a story. You bought it hook, line, and sinker, and then you've been selling your stupid story to everybody you can find that would fall for it. Who knows what I'm talking about? So you can either have a victim mindset or a victor mindset, which is a satanic mindset or a Christ mind. You either get the satanic mindset or the Christ mindset. Satanic mindset is a victim mindset. Victor mindset is the Christ mindset. Christ is victorious. There, he, he's, uh, he, went to the, he went to hell and took the devil's teeth. He already took all of the, the he, he unlocked all the cages. He took the devil's teeth. The devil, devil ain't got no teeth. He's victorious. It's done. So do you want to keep playing victim? Oh no, the world's against me. The people are against me. Oh, blah. Or do you want to receive the king of kings who's told you the truth, the truth that sets you free? You're not a victim. 
everything's perfect, God's on the throne, it's all going according to plan. I mean, Jesus said, hey, look, there's gonna be the end of the illusion of time. Time is gonna end and it's gonna end in tribulation. It's gonna be crazy. Antichrist is gonna rise up, wars and, uh, and rumors of wars and the, the, the worst, the worst that humanity's ever experienced is coming. And I'm telling you that, not to scare you, but to just so you'll know that I'm on the throne. Like, what? You mean when everything's going to hell in a handbag, that's how I know you're on the throne? That seems, that seems reversed. That seems ridiculous. That, that, that makes me think that you're not on the throne. But he already knew that's what was going to come, just like he knew he was going to the cross. But Peter's like, nobody's going to take you to the cross, Jesus. No, that will not on my watch. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Because you don't know the higher plan, the higher perspective. God's on the throne. I'm going to the cross because God's on the throne. You're trying to stop it. That's Satan getting you to try to stop it. Because you think it's not supposed to happen. There's a plan. And so all the things that you think are not supposed to happen, it's because you've got a victim mindset. These things are supposed to happen. The hell on earth is supposed to happen. The beast system is supposed to be implemented. That's all part of God's plan. He already told us it was going to happen. So what are you so afraid of? What, if you're afraid of that, that means you don't believe in God. If you're afraid of the things that are coming, then that means you do not believe in God. And if you do not believe in God, then you're, you're dead already. What are you worried about? You're already in hell. No big deal. Stay in your satanic mindset and keep going to war with nothing. Resistance breeds persistence. What you fight against, you create. You're fighting something that doesn't even exist and you're giving it your power. This evil villain that I've got to stop. I've got to stop the evil villain. No, the evil villain doesn't even exist. It's already been stopped. Jesus took the devil's teeth. He's conquered the world. It's over. Game over. It's done. Now you can move to the afterlife, which is the beginning of life. It's, the, it's actually the after death. You can move to the after death, but you've got to let who you're not die and then resurrect in the son Jesus who has a higher perspective. You can receive the Christ mind and receive the Christ eyes and you can realize that you had real eyes in your eyes, uh, real lies in your eyes that you thought were real. They were lies, but you made them more real than real and you can pluck those out and then you can have real eyes, the eyes of Christ, right? So, um, Victim tries to coerce you into paying a debt that is not yours using shame, guilt, and obligation. Anybody ever felt coerced with shame, guilt, and obligation? That's what they did. The whole satanic uh, thing, the, the jab, everybody GMO themselves. They used shame and guilt uh, and obligation. That's how they did it. That's how they got, so they say they got 80% of the people to GMO themselves, to take the jab. That's what they said. They, they, but how'd they do it? Oh, you don't want to hurt your grandmama, do you? It, you could be infecting your grandma. You, you should be ashamed of yourself for not caring about your grandmama. Like, but it was, the whole thing was a lie. The whole thing was a scam to get to see how many people would fall for it. And the majority fell for it. So the stage is set. You know, now we got some, you know, just so you see what happened last night. Old Trump getting, uh, so you could see it all playing out right there. It was like a whole hero, victim, villain triad all just started like, what, so what is, is Trump, oh, the, oh, oh he's, the, he's the victim, but he stands up, fight, fight. <laughs> so he's like, it's like, he's like playing victim and playing hero at the same time. It's like both of them are happening at the same time. He's like, I'm your hero, I'm your savior, but he says the only reason that they're after me because they're not after me, they're after you and I'm standing in their way. So you need to protect me because I'm the victim of them, but I'm your hero. If you can protect your hero, then I'll save you, which show your victims. It's like, can you, you see how delusional? It's crazy, so, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's nuts. So, so, uh, so the victim turns on the bat signal and waits. And then if it doesn't work, they'll turn on another bat signal. <laughs> like, how come nobody's coming? Okay, let me turn on another one. But they have to create a problem or at least create a story that there's a problem in order to turn on the bat signal. They can't turn on the bat signal without a problem or at least a story that there's a problem. If they got a good story, they don't even need a problem if they got a good story. 
that there's a problem. They make it look like a problem. If they got a narrative that makes it looks like there's a problem there, then cool, turn on the bat signal. So that, the victim's turning on the bat signals to get people to dance. Uh, and the victim uses these covert contracts, hidden expectations on someone else. Has anybody ever felt like, like, you, like this little spider web? Like, oh, man, I think I'm in a fucking spider web or something, man. It's like, you feel like these little hooks on you. Like, it feels like I owe. Who do I, I owe somebody something? Who is it? I feel, I feel like I, it's like you, you owe your mom this debt or you owe your dad some sort of debt. And you're like, I don't even know why. Like, like why do I owe my mom this? What, what is this debt I owe my mom? And so it's these covert contracts that your mom slipped in and says, I'm going to take care of you but you're gonna take care of me. You don't, you, now you entered in this contract that you didn't even know you were in. You, you didn't, when you, when you entered in the contract, you're a little dependent kid that doesn't even have a, you're, you're, not, even, you're, you're not even conscious enough to make a, an agreement like that. Yet she agreed to it for you, or he did and said, okay, now you owe. I'm taking care of you, but you owe. And then you're stuck with that for the rest of your life. As long as, you still, as long as you still got the lies in your eyes, as long as you're still falling for the illusion that you were a victim that needed saving from your, that your parents were supposed to save you from. Like, you know, they, they saved you. They were your God. If you, if you got any, anyone or anything as your God, then you either, they created a covert contract with you or you created one with them so that you would actually hook them to you. Like, no, no, you got to save. Remember you saved me 20 years ago? You got to keep saving me. No, I didn't save you. <laughs> And I ain't going to keep saving you. I never did, and I never will. <laughs> so you go find somebody else to play those games with. Uh, if you let a victim vomit their stupid story on you, and you don't interrupt their real lies, which are lies that are real to them, if you let them vomit their stupid story, and you don't interrupt it, you don't, because it's lies. Like, if you won't cut in between their lies, then they're going to expect you to feel this deep sadness, and they're going to expect you to follow them around as their little savior slave. Anybody ever been somebody's savior slave? You follow them around like, are you okay? Oh, you okay? Are you okay? You're like always on, on you're always on duty. The savior slave is always on duty. So once, once they get you, once a victim hooks you, if you're with a, with, a, with a stupid story and you think it's not stupid, you think it's significant, if you take a stupid story and turn it significant, you, you become a savior slave. Like they'll turn a stupid story and turn, make it significant. If they can sell you the story and make you think it's significant, then you become a savior slave. Following them around, you're indebted for the rest of your life because you listened to their stupid story and you believed it. it became significant. If you believe it's significant, so the stupid story about the little boy getting slaughtered. Now, I can hear the victims just, victims and heroes, mind just going crazy right now. And the villain, the villain's mind going crazy. Like, no, that's not a stupid, I slaughtered him. I get significance for slaughtering a little child. Like, the, the villain wants significance. So, if, because, See, people are trying to get love and they can't figure out how to get it because you can't get it because you actually are it. And we leave what's real in the pursuit of what appears to be. We're pursuing what we actually already have. We're pursuing what we already are, but we've had to lie to ourselves that it's not there so that we, we even go after the thing in the first place. So we're going, we're going after love, but you can't actually get love. So what, you, what you'll settle, settle for is significance. And so the, but how you get the significance, well, if you're a victim, you have a significant story of how, how bad it was. If you're a hero, you got a significant story on how you saved someone from something that was so bad. If you're a villain, you get a significant story because if you put a gun in someone's face, you're instantly the most significant person to them in an instant. The victims, they get, theirs is easy. They get the easy one. All they got to do is put a, put a gun in somebody's face or shoot somebody. Or, but, well, actually, no, the villains are really stepping it up now. So, you know, now that's not so good. Like, I mean... Chopping up a little baby, that's, that's pretty significant. Like chopping up a little three-year-old child, that's a pretty significant story. So, so a, a, a villain would get some significance off of that, you know, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're, the villains are competing with each other on, on whose was the most significant, whose act was the most significant. Because, aha, I'm significant. Because bad attention is better than no attention for someone who's starving for love. But the only way you could starve for love is if you, if you are living inside of the lie that you... Uh, are not love, right? Everybody following right now? Man, I'm telling you, this is God. It's a God one. Y'all feel it? Y'all feel how God this is? If I, <laughs> wake up. Uh, now I warned everybody before we started this, if you, uh, if you, uh, 
if you didn't want to get, if you, you can't plead ignorance anymore once we go, so I'm removing the veil now. Y'all can all see it. You can see your bullshit. You can see the lies in your eyes and the lies in the, all around you. So, um, so again, if you let a victim vomit their stupid story on you and you don't interrupt their, their realized lies that, that, that are real to them, then they're going to expect you to feel deep sadness and follow them around as little savior slaves. And, and um, they'll make you dance around their doo-doo until your life is just as shitty as theirs so you don't have to feel guilty for you being happy while they're miserable. Huh? Everybody been a savior slave where you're dancing around their doo-doo and you have to feel like garbage because if you, don't have, if you don't feel like garbage, then you're guilty. You know what I'm talking about? You're guilty because they feel like garbage. How dare you feel good when they feel like garbage? You're not allowed. So they use, uh, what, what is it, uh, what was the thing we said earlier? The, yeah, misery, the shame, guilt, and obligation. Y'all, you've, has anybody ever felt the shame, guilt, the weight of the shame and the guilt and obligation? How about let's just, everybody go, and get that, get that shit off me. Get that shit, go ahead and cut all, get all the shit off me. Get all your stupid stories off of me. I'm done. Cut it all, all the webs. There you go. Cut it. Cut it. Cut all, all of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. Out. 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 All of it. In Jesus' name. In, amen. Out. All of it. So we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. If you're looking at a white wall wearing red glasses, you're going to swear the wall is red. If you're looking through the lying eyes of a victim, you're going to see the world against you. I mean, we, it happened last, yesterday. We were doing this event, this uh, uh, off-grid dream life event, and this lady signed up for the, she put the deposit down, and all of a sudden, she just starts flipping out. She's like, I feel so betrayed. I put down the deposit, and now I'm, I have to pay $15,000 right now. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I don't know where you got that from, but that, like, she's like freaking out because she was looking through the lying eyes of a victim. So you're, she's, she swears, like, somehow I got screwed. No, you didn't. You're just living inside of the lies. And if you, so a victim is fiending to be a victim. They're like, they, I, I need a hit of significance. I got to get screwed. In order to be significant, I got to be screwed. And so they, they're like, I need somebody to screw me. And if they can't find somebody to screw, they'll just create a story that somebody screwed them, even, it, even though it didn't happen. Anybody ever seen that before? Yeah. Anybody ever done that before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never even got screwed, but you'll go tell the story as if you did, and then get. And if you can get your stupid story to be, if you can make it significant, your stupid story significant enough to to get somebody to believe that your stupid story is significant, then you then you get a hit just as if it was a real story. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's insane. That's soup uh, swimming in a sea of psychosis. <laughs> Good God. So if you're looking through the, through the lying eyes of a victim, you're going to see the world against you. During a dramatic event like 9-11, everyone reveals their real lies. Victims, victim, heroes, heroes, and villains, villain. Like they all start popping up when, when like a, when an out of an ordinary event, like it's happening right now. You're watching with the, uh, with the, with the Trump thing. Oh, oh, big dramatic event. You're watching the, the victim's victim, the hero's hero, and the villain's villain. It's all popping up right now. Everybody's, the, all their lies are coming to the surface right now. It's getting revealed. So when those dramatic events happen, that's how, that's when you get to see it. Um, so y'all, who's, who's ready to be done with all that bullshit? Who's ready to get the, who's ready to get the lies out of your eyes? So Aside from eternal life with God, which is the greatest gift anyone could ever give me, the greatest gift, aside from that, the greatest gift that Jesus ever gave me was the ability to retire my cape. To just like, you know what? I don't need this cape anymore. I don't need to save nobody anymore. Now, why did, how did Jesus, uh, how, how did Jesus help me retire my cape? Because he's already saved everybody. It's already done. Uh, anytime I try to put on a cape and go save somebody, it means that i am got lies in my eyes, that I'm blocking myself from receiving, blocking the blessings, receiving the gift that's already been given, of, of salvation, of grace. It's, it's here. And there's nothing that I can do to get it. There's nothing I can do to get rid of it. So I'm taking the lies out of my eyes, and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the show. I mean, everybody can dance around inside of the, with the lies in their eyes thinking that they're victims 
thinking that they're suffering, but you're only suffering because you've got a significant, a stupid, significant, a, a stupid story that you've made significant, and you're worshiping your stupid story, making it so significant, and then getting other stupid people to fall for your stupid story, and getting them to believe your stupid story is significant, and they worship it along with you, and everybody's wor worshiping these stupid stories that don't even exist in the truth. Oh, goodness gracious. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> So because of Jesus, I can take a break and focus on me. I'm, now I don't have to be sitting there, huh, who's the next victim for me to save? Oh, you okay? You okay? Just watching victims. You okay? You sure you don't have a problem? You okay? Like, I don't, I'm not all like all anxiety ridden and all that. I can just relax and I'm like, okay, now let me look inside of me. Now I'm taking a microscope. Okay, what's going on in here? And I can just stay in, I can focus on me. So salvation is a point. Freedom is a process. Uh, salvation, you, get, you receive salvation the moment that you receive Jesus. Okay, cool. I received Jesus. He's, uh, he's my Lord and Savior. So it's, it's already done. But now freedom is a process and time it takes time. So now it's up to me to take the responsibility for getting all the lies out of my eyes. For because Jesus says, go and sin no more. So where am I still sinning? Where do I still have a false perspective? Sin is not an action to be punished. It's a perception to be corrected. Where am I still perceiving that God's not on the throne? Where am I still perceiving that there's still something wrong with my past or my future that I've got to fix? Wherever that is, that's a sin. And that's where I get to work. That's all I'm doing is I'm watching the sins. I'm watching the lies in my eyes and letting, letting Jesus handle everything because Jesus already handled everything. It's already, it's going perfectly according to his plan. So I'm just going to relax, and where I'm not relaxed, if I'm not experiencing peace, love, and joy, that means I've got some sort of lie in my eye, and I'm going to find that, and I'm going to take responsibility for it and get it out of me, and then move on. I'm preparing for peace. The, wor the, world's, the world is preparing for hell. They're going to war with each other. Heroes, victims, and villains all about to go to the final, the end game. We're in, ga we're in end game right now, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, but, the, but in the world, the, the world ends in hell, but the, well, the world, the world doesn't exist, but the people that actually allow the world to end, the world will end in peace. For the ones that won't allow the world to end, the world ends in hell for them because they're, they're not letting the world go. The world never existed in the first place, and the ones that won't let it go are going in deeper into delusions and lies along with the lie, you know, that it, that it ever existed. And now it's getting, now it's, you know, now it's like, oh, now it's gone, but I got to still find it. Now I got to find something that's gone that you're never going to find because it never existed in the first place. But, you know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so again, I care not, I care enough to not care about your stupid story. I care enough to call your story stupid. Who here is, who here is willing to care enough to not care about people's stupid stories? Who here is willing to care enough to actually call their story stupid when it's stupid? I. How do you know if it's stupid? Because it's stupid. <laughs> if, if they're making it more significant than them. Yeah. That's how you know it's stupid. If they're making their story more significant than their soul, then you know it's stupid. If, if, if you don't get to be with them because there's a story in between you and them, you know it's a stupid story. Like, I don't care about your stupid story. I want you. You are not your story. People come to me, well, you need to get to know me, John. I'm like, no, I don't get, I didn't need to get to know you. I already know you. The only thing that I can get to know is who you're not. I already know you. You and I, we're one and the same. We're, we're eternal beings and we are infinitely connected. And I know, I know your soul. I don't know your, your false identity and the thing that you're trying to get. But you need to hear all my stories so you can actually know about me. No, that's, yeah, that's me. I'm going to know, but I don't need to know about me. I don't, the only reason that I ever want to know about me is, is if you're like, hey, I would like to be assisted in coming out of me. And, and so, so, so I am can come out. So I'm ready to let go of me so I am can come out. If that's true, then cool. Tell me about, uh, tell me about your stupid story one last time and I'm going to listen to your stupid story so we can dissolve your stupid story. But if you are making your stupid story significant while I'm listening to it, I'm going to chop that fucking thing down. I'm going to walk off and I'm never going to listen again. Because I'm here for people who love the truth and want to live the truth. If you, don't want, if you don't love the truth and want to live the truth, then stay away from me because you are going to be pissed. I mean, you're pissed. You're, you're, you're miserable anyway, but you're going to be more miserable. The closer you get to me, the more miserable you're going to become because I'm not going to play your game of lies. Hashtag, hashtag fuck your truth. Hashtag, 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 hashtag fuck Johnny.
I love it. Mel's got a new hashtag, fuck Johnny. I love it. Because, uh, and her fuck Johnny is what set me, that's literally her fuck Johnny is what liberated me, what set me free. Because she's been doing fuck Johnny for seven years. Like, every now, every, every now and again, Johnny actually did something. But the majority, it was like, Johnny did like two things. But then there's been like about another 5,000 things that Johnny didn't do. It's just stupid stories that became significant. But it was all for the purpose of purifying my soul to cleanse, cleanse the sins from my lens. So I could find any time that like any of the, anytime somebody say, fuck Johnny, uh, if it like triggered something inside of me, no, don't fuck Johnny. No, 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 no. Johnny's good. Johnny's a good guy. If any of that came up, then I'm like, oh, I got to sit down. Let me find what that shit is and get that shit out of me. And so it was this purification process. And thank God, uh, Mel, uh, Mel s- sacrificed her. Now I'm not doing this as like, uh, like, so the only thing to sacrifice is your suffering. She, but she played a role of, of playing victim for a, like a, allowed her. Now she, she, so she, her stupid story, she was a little girl who got her ass whipped by her mom. Her mom was just evil, mean. Uh, her dad didn't exist. There was, you know, she didn't even know who her dad was. And so she had a stupid story that was very significant. And she, dr- I mean, there was a time where she would, um, she told one of her, now this wasn't a stupid story. It was a stupid story when it was significant to her, like it was actually real, but she told it as a stupid story later because she's, she, she's like stepping out of the stupid story, the significance of it. But she shared when she was a little girl, she would uh, be in a store and her mom would be walking and she'd be walking behind her mom and she would start walking with a limp like this. So somebody would have pity for her. So she'd be like, like she wanted the people to think that her mom was this worthless piece of shit and she wanted to be saved from this worthless piece of shit. So she would limp. She would just fake a limp, dragging this little girl, dragging her leg behind her mom. <laughs> so, so, so she could lure in a hero. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's crazy. So, uh, so Mel had, the, so she had all this pain that was in her because of all these stories that she had, she had packed inside of her identity. She, so who she was was this victim of circumstance, this victim of her, of her past, this victim of her, of her mom, of her life. And so um, she, we're not here to feel happy, we're here to feel fully. She felt fully over the past several years, she was, she's been feeling fully, feeling her victim fully. And uh, she, she got to go all the way over the past several years, she got to go all the way fully being, experiencing herself as a victim now, one was for her to liberate herself from her stupid stories, but another way, it's a gift for me because the, cause it got to test my hero because my hero, I, like, I had to lay my hero down so I could be free, so I could see, like, nope, you're in Jesus' hands. And so, it, like, how many, like, how hard it was for me many times, like, when her victim would be flaring for me to say, nope, God's got you. I don't, nope, I'm not the one to go save you. God's got you. And then if she would then go and take it the next notch would then, as if I was the villain because I didn't save her, like, oh, nope, yeah. Because most of the time, it w- she actually wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be me, it would be somebody else was the villain, and she's trying to get me to save her from this villain. I'm like, mm, there's not actually a villain there. That's not, the, you know, that's your stupid story of what you think is happening, that you're layering on top of reality. You got the lens, the lens of a victim that you're seeing this. And so she'd like, save me from the thing. I'm like, mm, that, it's not actually what you think it is. And then, okay, well, then you're the evil then. I'm like, oh, you know, so all that, like she, that was a gift for me, for her to fully get to be, be the, the victim because it needed to go all the way as far as it could be. One, so it could be let, let, let go of, out, out of her. She could let it all go, but also so I could, pa- you know, pass the test. I had to go all the way, like for me to pass the, the fullness of the test. So now, fuck Johnny, hashtag fuck Johnny is like such a great gift. It's such a great gift for me because... And, and it's such a great gift for humanity because, I mean, she talked about, it's like a year ago, she was telling us about how she could take a papaya and look at this pot papaya and figure out how her life was horrible because of this papaya and it was my fault. And then she told that story a while back, but then it was funny when she started doing the Fuck Johnny campaign, um, she was eating a papaya, like the, that same day, she, started, she was eating a papaya and then she there, uh, realized, she's like, what's happening in my mouth? And and her mouth starts going numb and she's like, looks and there's ants all in the papaya. And she was eating ants. She was eating a papaya that was full of ants. And so she's like, eating ants. And she's like, hashtag fuck Johnny. Like she, find, she figured out how to turn up, how to f- say fuck Johnny with a papaya. Now, 
At this point, she was already awake from the illusion of the victim. She was no longer in her stupid story. She's, she's now liberated from her stupid story. She no longer perceives herself as a victim. She's transcended. The victim has died, realizing that it never existed in the first place. And her true self, her soul, is now resurrected as the, as, you know, the full power of God comes through her as a, a child of God, a daughter of God, as royalty. So she let go of her, of her victim identity, her satanic mind, mindset, and has received her Christ mind now. So... Really cool. So, fuck Johnny. Thank God for fuck Johnny. And so, uh, <laughs> and I've always talked about how you, who I, I'm your asshole, right? So, I help you let shit go. But uh, uh, I did a breakthrough, like, a, on that last Monday a, about uh, my f- fear of being the villain. Like, uh, here at the village, like, people, uh, all, anybody who had, like a, like, a, you know, authority problems or daddy issues they always would layer it on top of kirk and so kirk was this was always the villain like if you had any sort of authority issues um then it was kirk was a tyrant he's the dictator he's the villain and they would just like talk shit about him just hate him like and i was like but i i see now like i'm like it's 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 my turn i'm actually moving into that role now and I'm like, ooh, man, I don't want to be Kirk. Like, I, I'm cool being the asshole, right? The, the fun asshole that just helps you let shit go. But, but yeah, man, to be the, you know, I don't want to be the, the, the one, the, the actual villain. Like, the asshole is fun, but the actual villain, the dictator tyrant, I don't want to be that. And so then uh, Sarah, I was saying that, and Sarah's like, why not? I'm like, well, okay, 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 you got something. So I, I fell, I laid down on the floor. I'm like, let's go. And so we, we did all the digging and got all the, the stuff in me about, you know, the, the judgment on, on the, you know, being the, I don't like being the villain, and, you know. And so now it's like, like, cool. It's like so, like, it, it, I can feel the complete liberation. It's like, it's done inside of me. Like, it's, I'm completely free. Thanks to fuck Johnny, right? Hashtag fuck Johnny. The villain. Johnny the villain. Yeah. <laughs> Not even just your ass. Yeah, the hero's biggest fear is be, be the villain. So, at your service. <laughs> yeah, asshole, the villain, yeah, whatever you want to whatever you want to do. Have at it. Use me however you want to get yourself set free. D- dickhead, all of it, all of it, whatever you want to call. I mean, here we are at church. I'm using the most foul language, and I'm sure everybody, if anybody's out there, like, so programmed into their into their religion, and they're like, how dare he have, call this a church service? And he's saying, fuck Johnny, and call himself a dickhead. And ah, I'm, maybe, I'll put, maybe I'll put some shorts out that's just simply those little, the, the most fucked up things that I could possibly be saying at church. I'll put the shorts out and let everybody just have a, have a blast with it and uh, how, how big of a piece of shit I am. Enjoy. <laughs> none, none, what? None your business. None your business. Yeah. So you got a million reputations, but only one character. Work on your character and let everybody sort themselves out. You get that? Um, I found this. Uh, the, nice. you, yeah, you like that? Yeah, so I, my character's intact, man. I'm, I'm solid. I am just like, sh- that's a, clean as a whistle up in here. Currently, I mean, it might, you know, some poo might get in there. Get, but currently, I'm clean as a whistle. So character is intact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm not here to toot my own horn, but toot toot. <laughs> toot toot. So um, there's the armor of God. And I, so I, this thing popped up. I actually had it last week and about these little things. Uh, I actually, I can't remember where, I, I think I got AI to tell me about the armor of God. And I'm pretty sure that's where I got this from. But uh, I had it last week, but uh, Fuck Johnny. Mel just good. <laughs> Mel's, uh, Mel's, Mel's here. <laughs> Wonder what Johnny did this time. <laughs> Do, Do, Johnny didn't do anything anymore because the victim's dead. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I had this last week, but it didn't come up last week. I didn't get to it last week, and now I brought it back this week. And I literally, I heard like three people in the past three days talk about the armor of God. I'm like, hey, that's in my, I got it. So I'm like, I, I was thinking about taking it out, and, but it's, I'm like, no, I need to go ahead and go through it. So armor of God. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six aspects of the armor of God. So again, you've got a million reputations, but only one character. Fuck your reputation. 
Work on your character. Get that toot toot clean as a whistle character going and you're good to go. But that's all part of the armor of God. So the armor of God, once you got the armor of God, there, there's no one or no thing can, has any impact, any effect over you. They, they, can't, get, they can't get to you because you got the armor of God. You're perfectly contained inside, one with God, protected. Uh, you don't even need protection because you are got the armor of God. So uh, first you got the belt of truth. So stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. That's Ephesians 6, 14a. The belt of truth represents honesty, integrity, and the truth of God's word, which holds everything together. All right, so I got, so that's good. So if you got the belt of truth, you got honesty, integrity, truth of God's word, which holds everything together. So it's holding it all together. So the truth is holding everything together. If you've got the truth, then you don't need to hold everything together because the truth is already doing it. If you're trying to hold anything together, it's because you don't have the truth. You're still seeking the truth. Once you have the truth, the belt of truth, everything's being held together and you can just relax in perfect peace. And then you got the breastplate of righteousness. This is where the, uh, you got a million reputations but only one character, work on your character and everything. One, let everyone sort, them, sort themselves out. So when you got the breastplate of righteousness, um, with the re- bless, re- breastplate of righteousness in place, this is Ephesians 6, 14, the breastplate protects the heart and symbolizes living in a righteous life through the power of Christ. So I, I'm living a righteous life now through the power of Christ. The, the sins have been cleansed. And so because my character has been so developed, I've got a breastplate that, that's, that's covering my heart so when people are firing shots at my heart, it does, it's not hurting my heart because it's not, uh, it's nothing there. The, the thing that they're hitting is not it. Like the, it can only hurt my heart if there was hurt in my heart. There's no hurt in my heart anymore because I've cleansed the sins from my, the lies out of my eyes. So it's the purification and I'm actually walking in righteousness with Christ. And because I'm wor- walking in, in righteousness with Christ, nothing hits, go ahead. Yes, because I believe what Christ believes about me, not what the people are saying. Great, thank you. And it's not, I'm not in denial. It's not like I'm, I'm in denial, believing what Christ, like I've actually transcended. I've, Jesus says, go and sin no more. So I actually did it. I took all, I, I received the truth. I received the word of God and I looked at all the stuff and I cleansed it all out and I'm, and I'm, I'm clean, I'm righteous and I'm walking in that. So uh, I believe Christ versus the people. Then there's the shoes of the gospel of peace. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. This is Ephesians 6, 15. The shoes represent being prepared to spread the message of peace and the good news of Jesus Christ. And so I got the shoes. I'm, I'm, these shoes are made for walking. I'm, and I'm walking around. Like I'm, I'm speaking it. I'm speaking the good news. The good news of, it's of peace, of perfect peace, of unconditional peace. Even when the world's going to hell in a handbag, guess what I'm going to be experiencing? The peace of God, that the, the peace that Jesus gave me, the Prince of Peace gave me peace that transcends understanding. I don't even need to understand what's going on in the world because I got peace. And if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. I don't trade my peace in for nothing. So, and I, and I share that gospel. Hey, you too, you too could step into this ivory tower. All you gotta do is receive Jesus. He paid, for, he paid your debt, he cleansed your sins. You're good. And if, as long as you will receive him and then allow that to purify your mind from all the stinking thinking, all the satanic mindset, all the satanic victim thoughts that you've had, let it be purified. You're not a victim, you're victor because you're victorious with Christ. He's, he's, he's finished it. It's done. It's over. Enjoy. The shield of faith. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. This is Ephesians 6, 16. The shield of faith helps to protect against doubt and fear, acting as a defense against spiritual attacks. So I've got the, the shield of faith because without vision, the people perish. And so faith is believing it before you see it. So in the world, there's still, there's still things out there that appear, that a, appear to be uh, not in alignment with God. Is it, 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 it would appear, if you just look on the surface, wow, that doesn't look like God's on the throne. But faith is believing it before you see it. And I absolutely know, without a doubt in my mind or in my heart, that God's on the throne, that, that it, 
that God is victorious, that it's all, it's all done. And because I have that, there's this shield around me that cannot be penetrated by the lies of the world. And I just, I just keep on walking. I'm just like, mm, mm, you say whatever you want to say, play however you want to play, but you're delusional. You might call me delusional, but you actually are. So, <laughs> uh, and then the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6, 17. The helmet protects the mind and represents the assurance of salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ. Because I know I've received Jesus, like I've, I'm, I've received salvation. So all the things I, now who I once was, that's who I never was. Who I once was, that's who I never was. And Jesus has, has, has he's separated the wheat from the chaff. He's cast aside and thrown into the fire furnace, who I'm not. And I can't even pick up who I'm not. It's like, when I was a broke, ignorant, blackout, drunk, atheist, beach bum, that's like, it seems like so many lifetimes ago. Like, I can't even relate to it anymore. I'm like, I don't even understand how I walk through the world in that way. How, how did I even perceive the world that way? It's like, it's just so weird. It's so foreign to me. That's not me. Like, that's literally not me. Jesus has burnt it. And people say, you, you can't change. Like, well, no, you can't change, but you can change clothes and you can take off the, the lying clothes, the, the, the sin nature, you can take it off, to take the flesh off and let, that, and let Jesus cast it in the fire so you can never put it on again. And that's what he's done. So I have salvation. He can't put, this, he can't put these clothes on me ever again. Like, no, Satan can't put them on me. This, this false identity of this, this piece of shit, that Satan can't put those clothes on me. He can't put me to sleep anymore because Jesus has cast that into the fiery furnace. And now the wheat is standing before you. So I got the helmet of salvation. And then the last is the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 17b. The sword is, only offensive, is the only offensive weapon in the armor, symbolizing the power of the word of God to cut through deception and falsehood. And I absolutely got the sword of the spirit because I will tell you the truth. And I mean, it pisses people off left and right. And that's great. They're getting split. They're getting separated. Wheat from the chaff. And I'm just going to keep... Si I got the sword of the truth because when I say the truth, you're going to watch. You're going to watch people pull, pull out their swords or their shields if they don't believe in the sword, if they don't believe in the truth. It, when, when I bring the sword of truth, then all the people that know the truth are going to be like, yeah, dude, woo! The people that don't know the truth are going to pick up a sword and a shield. I'm like, okay, those are the people that need the truth. Those are the people that are heading to hell. And so, and uh, I used to not uh, believe in, I, I used to not have the sword of truth because I didn't believe, I didn't believe in the word of God. And I was uh, depressed. I was suffering. I was, did sinful things. I did a bunch, of, because I didn't even believe in the word of God. I didn't believe in the Bible. So um, if somebody came at me with the sword of truth, I would pull out a sword or a shield back, back when I was who I'm not back when I was the broke, ignorant, blackout, drunk, atheist, beach bum, I would go on attack when the sword of truth came at me. So now it's, it's reversed. Now I'm standing here with the sword of truth and I'm watching people wanting to fight. They're getting all offended because they've been convicted of their bullshit. So everybody say, I'm realizing that I once saw through eyes packed with lies. I'm giving up lies that seemed real. So I can have eyes that see what is real. I'm leaving the dungeon of lies and entering the tower of truth. Uh, you know, Mel was a, uh, yeah, there you go, my sword of truth right there. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, oh who's, uh, who wants some? Yeah, so Mel, uh, Mel, like she had a choice um, like it was, it was time. The sword of truth came for Mel. It was time for her, like both of us. We're both, okay, we're both done. I'm purified now. I don't need, I don't, I don't, I don't need her victim to uh, flare anymore because it's, it's purified. So I don't need that. I'm like, okay, that's, that's over. Sword of truth comes. That's not you. Um, thank you for your service. The victim, thank you for your service for being here to assist me in, pu in the purification process. It's over because now it's time for Mel to be set free. And so then Mel, like, ah. And so she'd been, her whole life, been identified with I mean, she was growing the truth inside of her, but she was also growing, like, 
not growing the lies, but the lies were coming more and more to the surface. So they were, it was like the truth, but it was like the truth was growing bigger and bigger inside of her, but it was like as it was growing, like all the lies are ha having to get pushed out. So they're all coming to the surface. And then so she was sitting there or laying there in the pool and looking at Jaguar Jesus. And she's like, she could, so fear is imagination running wild. Faith is imagination focused. And the, her imagination was running wild as like the victim was like, ah, but then she's like looking at Jaguar Jesus. And there's a picture on the wall that uh, that was painted by one of the uh, the Baruka tribe, and it's it's beautiful. And you can you, you can feel you can feel God in there. So she's looking at and she can she's looking in the jaguar's eyes, but she's seeing Jesus in there. She's so focused on Jesus in the jaguar, and so her imagination is focusing, and she just lets go of all the lies like in an instant. And all of a sudden, God gave her a way where there was once no because she was so lost in the lies in that moment that she was like, there's no way out of this. Like, I can't, I, I can't be free from this. But she just focused. She's there with Jesus, Jaguar Jesus. She's looking and she connects. And all of a sudden, Jesus drops in the truth. And she says, hashtag fuck Johnny. Boom, and it comes out, fuck Johnny. Now, I don't know how this is it. I don't know how this is the way where there's no way. But this is it, hashtag fuck Johnny. And she just pff, let it rip. And how it was, it was the end of the, it was the end for both of us because I, again, the day before I had just done my breakthrough. You don't know if you got the lesson until you take the test. And so she starts blasting out to her whole community, hashtag fuck Johnny. And there was no, there was no fear of being a villain inside of me. There was, it hit, it hit a tuning fork. So, so the, the, so thank you, Sarah, for walking me through the breakthrough. It, it was, it was done. It, that's proof that the process was complete. It was done, and yeah, and there was no fear in Mel of hurting the victim. Uh, 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 neither one of us were afraid of being villains. So, yeah, so it, it just got set free, and we got liberated. Our whole community got, and now you would watch, again, how I talked about 9-11, the victim's victim, the hero's hero, the, the uh, uh, villain's villain, and all of a sudden, like, because it's, like, out of the ordinary, so people start reaching out to her, to Mel, like, hey, so heroes were heroes, victims were trying to trauma bind, victims were trying to, victim, uh, uh, heroes were trying to save her, uh, protect her, and then the villains were trying to, act, like, just, like wanting to find out, ooh, ooh, is there a crack in the, is there a crack in the kingdom that I can just use this to, de to destroy it all? So you could see all the identities were coming to the surface in there. It was really, it was a really cool experience. So um, hashtag fuck Johnny, fuck Johnny is set. Is, was the completion of the, the test being passed. Mel in perfect faith, me in perfect, John, I, John, uh, I am, uh, all in alignment and perfect faith. And then we got to watch the community get to rise up as well. It was, it was super cool. Uh, so real eyes equals, so real eyes, eyes that are seeing what's real is walking by faith, not by sight. Faith is imagination focused, fear is imagination running wild. Faith, it's not, something that you're, it's not something you're waiting for. Hope is something that you're waiting for. I hope there's a way. Hope is a light at the end of the tunnel. Faith is when you realize there is no tunnel. So Mel stepped, she didn't go into hope that day when she was looking at Jaguar Jesus. She went from hope to faith. It was done already. She's like, I don't know how fuck Johnny is it, but it's it. And she just listened to God and God said, go. God said, post this all over the place. And it was the perfect, it was it. Was it. It, was, it was perfect in every way. So, oh, and I passed the test. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I passed the test also because I believed Mel. Um, somebody was messaging me like, oh, no, she's like psychotic and had a psychotic break and she's lost. She's not even there anymore. I'm like, uh, no, she's good. I said, yes, she is crazy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm facing reality. Yes, she is crazy, but... He, um, but Mel will never let her crazy outperform her commitment to being a woman uh, uh, of God with great character. I said, I know, I said to this person, I said, I know Mel, I know Mel very well. She, yes, she is crazy, <laughs> but she will never let her crazy uh, win, out, win over her uh, 
her, her commitment to be a woman of great character of God. And I said, even when she's mad, there's method in her madness. That's what I, that's what I said. And I'm like, so I was just chilling in perfect peace. Perfect peace. And, like, uh, and, then, Mel, and then Mel's like, hey, buy uh, the website fuckjohnny.com. She didn't even tell me what was going on, why she did this. She said, buy fuckjohnny.com. And I'm like, okay. And I went and bought it. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, ooh, there's something, there's something here. I could feel it. I'm like, ooh, there, God's at work right here. So I went and bought the web, fuckjohnny.com. And I still don't know where it's going to go, but it's, I, I, I feel like somehow it's like this, it's a gift for humanity. Fuckjohnny.com is somehow some sort of gift for humanity that we have yet to see the fulfillment. Maybe we have seen it. I don't know. Maybe this is it. But it, it, there's potentially more coming that I think that more of the masses are going to get to receive. Uh, Sarah might be receiving something back there. You see it? Okay, Sarah's might be seeing it. Recognizing all the parts. Being able to see what part people are playing and be, be able to be of service of them. Like when we played the game, you know, you can watch how people are playing in the game. So this is like, it's a game, but people don't know it's a game. Oh, there it is. We're in the afterlife. We set the game in motion and watch how the people are reacting. Like, ah, they don't know they're playing a game. And like, oh, okay, hero, victim, villain. Okay. <laughs> Cool. All right, so, dang, okay, it might, might be a little bit of, of a long, we're getting close to the end, but Cole asked me, is this going to be a long one today? I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. I said, it's going to be a really God one today. <laughs> so, uh, so again, real eyes, the real eyes is walking by faith, not by sight. Faith is imagination focused, fear is imagination running wild. Faith is done already. Real lies, like the, the lies that are coming out your eye, uh, out of your mouth that you believe to be true, that is, oh, this just came through this morning. I'm like, ooh, damn, that's good. This is what most people are doing. So when you have real eyes, you're walking by faith, not by sight. When you have real lies, you're walking by fear, not by sight. You know, when you got the, the red lens on, you're looking at the wall, you swear it's white. When you got real lies, lies that you believe to be real, you're walking by fear, not by sight. You're not even looking through your eyes. You're not seeing reality. You're seeing your fear plastered all over the place. So uh, real eyes is walking by faith, not by sight. Real lies is walking by fear, not by sight. Fear is false evidence appearing real. You got all the evidence to build your case, to build your story of why you're a victim of the past, the present, or the future. Got the whole case, all the evidence, and that induces fear. If you're experiencing fear, that means you have taken false evidence and that appears to be real and you made it to, made it to be your truth. And now you're living inside of a lie. So perfect love casts out all fear. How much of fear does perfect love cast out? All, all the fear. We are made to be perf perfected by love. We do that by faith training. Faith training is realizing that everything happens for a reason. All things work for good. And every adversity carries with the seed of an equal or greater opportunity. The bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. The bigger the obstacle, the, the greater the, the opportunity that it is that you're receiving right there. The problems victims had in their lives that they're worshiping for decades were not problems at all. They were pathways to the promised land. There was the door. And they're like, this, oh. they, they thought they hit a wall. Like, oh, it hurt so bad when it hit the wall. Then they're worshiping stories about, these, these, about their suffering. They're worshiping stories about significant, stupid stories about their suffering for decades. But those, those moments that they're worshiping, that they won't let go of, where they've hit a wall, it wasn't a wall, it was a door. It was literally the pathway to the promised land. And you need to go back to where you hit the wall. It wasn't a wall. It's like Zelda, right? There's walls. There's something hidden behind that wall. You got you to go through that wall. On the other side of that wall is the gift that you've been waiting for. Now, here you are 30 years later, still suffering, still not in the promised land because you tried to, you tried to carry on without getting the gift of that level. There was something, you didn't pass the test yet. You didn't get the gift that was behind that wall that you hit. 
That was your pathway to the promised land. So you're calling yourself a victim. No, you're just delusional. You're living inside of lies. You're looking at a wall that was actually a door. You're calling it a wall that blocked you, but it was a door that was going to uh, liberate you. But you, you're not seeing it correctly. And, you're, and then somebody comes and believes your stupid story and say, oh, yeah, you are a poor little baby victim. You poor thing. Yes, you should suffer for the rest of your life. No, hey, all right, shut, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear that stupid story. I'm going to hear it one more time, but we're only going to go in there to find the gift inside of it. And from this moment forward, that story is going to be used for liberation, not for oppression. This is it. It's over. Who knows what I'm talking about? So, so the problems victims had in their lives that they were worshiping for decades were not problems at all. They were pathways to the promised land. Goliath is the gate. Your Goliath is not there to kill you. He's there to, re reveal, to reveal you. When Steven Spielberg, he's creating a, 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 a storyline, he starts with the villain. Because the villain is what defines the hero. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> David was preparing for Goliath when he was fighting. Uh, he was killing with, with his bare hands. He's killing lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. And then Goliath shows up. He's like, I got this. So he was preparing in private for what he was about to do in public. And he was about to be revealed as the son of God, as a king. But nobody gave a shit about David. And he's this little dude, this little sheep herder. Nobody gave a shit about David until he took down Goliath. And then everybody's like, oh, shit. Who are you? Like, how, that's impossible. So your, your Goliath is your gate. It's gonna, he's not there to kill you. You're still feeling like you got murdered by Goliath 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago. No, 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 no. Go back and get his ass. Go back and take him down. That wasn't meant to kill you. It was meant to reveal you. Right in front of everybody. Do it in front of everybody. Do it in public. Don't tell, tell your story in public, but tell your story about salvation. Tell your story about victory, not victim. I don't want to hear your stupid victim story ever again. Tell your victor story. How, hey, this story was big. This story was significant for me, and I transcended this story. My mess has become my message, and if I can get set free, so can you. That's what the story's for. Not to imprison and disempower people, but to liberate them. To show if you can do it, they can do it too. If little David can take down Goliath, what can we do? If, if God is for us, who can be against us? With Jesus, all things are possible. And I got Jesus in my soul. I got Jesus in my heart. And you, I'm like, it's inevitable. It's not even possible. It's inevitable. Like, it's done. We have birthed the new earth and we're expanding. We're doing just as God commanded. He said, establish my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and be fruitful and multiply. We're, we're fruitful. We're multiplying. We're already expanding out. The next village is already 10 times the size and we're going to have 10 more 10 times the size villages. It's just, as we spread across the earth, as hell on earth is being birthed, so is heaven on earth. Because every adversity carries with a seed of an equal or greater opportunity. Our deepest fears are like dragons guarding our deepest treasures. If Satan sends legion, you know you're in the region. Yeah. <laughs> legion is the collective of demons. And so that was the first, the, when Jesus was about to start his ministry, the first miracle or whatever, the first supernatural thing that he did, met legion and cast out the demons, cast out the demons of, of Legion out of this dude, cast out the demons inside of Mary Magdalene. That's how he started casting out demons. That's how it began. Yeah. So when we first, I, I remember, I remember, <laughs> remember, our first remember, I was watching the, how, how it got inspired. I was watching The Chosen and there was the scene where Jesus was about to turn the water into wine. And there's this story about how it is, it's, there's, like, there's a guy like, sharing a story as Jesus is about to go in because he didn't want to do it. He's like, uh, it's not time yet. I don't, I'm, not ready to, I'm not ready to go yet. I'm not ready to, because once I do this, once I do this miracle, like, I can't undo this. Everybody's going to see it. And they're like, oh, crap, there's something different here. And so he didn't want to do it, but it was time. And so there's this story going on that's overlaying the, 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 the moment where it says, like, talk about a stone worker. Once that stone worker cuts the stone, like the first cut, it's irreversible. You can't undo that cut. 
Once you do it, it's done. And you can only go forward from there. And so he's like about to cut the stone by performing the miracle. And I felt that come alive inside of me when I saw that moment. I'm like, because we had Awaken Life Live was our event, that, the, the event that we'd been doing. But that, this new event came alive in me. And it's like, it's called Remember. And this is the moment that we, we've, been, we've been rooting. And now it's time to, to come out so we can start fruiting. And we're going to, this is the first time the movement becomes, comes above ground, was the, was the remember. I, and I knew that, that first remember experience was going to be that. So we did the first remember experience. It was, a, I mean, we pierced through the veil. We, we ripped the veil between heaven and earth. And Legion, like literally Legion shows up. The demon, I didn't know anything about Legion back then. I'm like, I don't know. And this lady shows up. She's like, Legion, Legion is here. He's got a message for John. And I'm like, John, no one talk, no demons. Like, but it was, it was already set in motion. It had to happen. And then more demons kept showing up. Like these demons just kept, I'm like, all right, I got to figure out what to do about these demons. So that's when I, uh, like learned how to do deliverance but <laughs> deliverance is something that you learn it's the only way to do deliverance is get out of the way and let jesus let jesus get do it do the job it's jesus and the holy spirit handles the whole thing and you just you just get out of the way and so it was like a next level of supernatural that that happened so if satan sends legion you know you're in the region like you're getting close to the promised land because it's like he's like got to do everything he can to stop you from going through that door so he's guarding the door with legion he's guarding the door with all the demons and the more it's like ah, like the more armies are coming at you like oh you you getting close so when all the, the victims are telling their victim story about oh no my no that's because you were close like you were about to walk through go back and walk through that door Go get that key because that key is going to prepare you for the present. There's something that's, that's coming right, right soon, but you can't go through this door until you go back and get the key that was in that, in that, mo in that, in that moment. There was a lesson. There was, there was something that you've got to go back and receive because that, that was your lion, your tiger, and your bear that you were supposed to be taking down. You didn't take them down, but you can go back and take them down. You can, you can go back through the story, go into the story one last time, but go to, get the, go to get the message, the lesson. The lesson was not that you're a worthless victim, that the world is beating down. The lesson is that you're victorious, that you got God in you. And with, with God is in you, then it transcends all the other stuff. There's nothing in this world that's bigger than what's in you. And so you let what's in you come get grow inside of you in those moments in your mind and it prepares you for, for this present that's coming. Like you've got a moment where there's a Goliath standing in front of you, but you're gonna see Goliath as like a little nothing. Once you, take, once you get all the messages, like you, can't, you don't even see Goliath anymore. As long as you got the gift throughout the, the journey, if you got, the, if you got all, the, all your, your, your sword of truth, your, your helmet, your breastplate, you got all the pieces through all those moments that you went through that you once thought was hurting you, no, it was assisting you to prepare you in your hero's journey for this moment. And as long as you got all that, then when Goliath shows up, you don't even see, you're like, pff, pff. you just knock him down like he's a nothing. Like, it, like there was zero fear inside of David. He didn't even, like, everybody's like, oh, Goliath. But David's like, Psh, I can take that thing down. That ain't nothing for me. Poop, and it's gone. Now, to everybody else, it looked giant. But to him, it looked tiny because he prepared. And so you've been prepared. If you've had, anybody had any painful problems in your past? Yeah, those were there to prepare you. But you got to get the gold out of it. And the gold is not that you're a victim, not that they're a victim. The gold is that God is on the throne, and when you get that gold that God is on the throne and he's on the throne of your heart, you're good to go. And no matter what walks through that door, psh, oh, come on, <laughs> whatever it is, I, come on, hey, walk, walk on over here, sit on down right here. And the demon, the, it thinks, it think, it's like, what, aren't you, aren't you afraid of me? You're supposed to be afraid of me. Psh, I know, I've seen the likes of you. Like you're, pff, I've seen the likes of your nothingness. Uh, I'm about, yeah, you're so cute. You're, that's cute, that's cute. But we're about, I'm not here afraid of you, but I'm here to liberate you. And you're about to be liberated from your, from your lies too. So, uh, so I've, been, I've been watching what the demons are attacking. What the demons are attacking are revealing what's sacred. Whenever you see demons coming after something like, oh, now, you know, there's the counterfeit versions of it where people are artificially creating what the demons are attacking. Uh, so, but literally like looking, feeling in the spirit what demons are actually going after, what they're actually, actually the, the actual demons are attacking. It's revealing what's, what's sacred. Um, when I was a, a broke, ignorant, blackout, drunk, 
depressed atheist beach bum. I hated the word of God. I talked about this a moment ago. I hated the Bible. I hated Jesus. But the more I like what is miserable, uh, 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 the more I like what the miserable version of me hated, the more joyful I become. So there was the mis miserable version of me that hated the word of God, that hated the Bible, hated Jesus. The more I like those things, the, m the more joyful I become. So I can literally now, I can say, like, I, back when I was broke, ignorant, blackout, drunk, atheist, miserable, depressed, atheist, beach bum, I would have judged the shit out of what's about to come out of my mouth. I was like, you're a complete, I, I, I did, I was like, you're a complete idiot, you're a, you're a complete idiot, is what I would say. You're, you're not just idiot, you are a complete idiot, is what I would have said to, to me, but who I was back, I will, I do not want to trade places with who I was then and who I am now. Like, I know I'll stay here. If, uh, I don't want to be where you are. I'm going to be where I am. And, and uh, so I'm going to keep believing what I believe and not believe what you believe. Because I know the fruits of what you believed, uh, old drunk John. And they were horrific. You suffered. You struggled. It was dark. And I'm living in the kingdom of God here. So I'm going to tell you what, what, what you think is stupid, but I know is salvation, I know it's sovereignty, I know it's success, I know it's, it's everything. So here's what I can now say. Jesus brings me joy. I remember, uh, no, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> that would have been, <laughs> I guess I'm going, I guess, I guess I'm going there. <laughs> No, no, I got to go there. I mean, let me, God, dear Heavenly Father. <laughs> just, uh, okay, I'll just say this. I won't go the whole way, but I'll just say this. So I used to work on a parasail boat on the beach, and we'd have like, you know, these, these Christian youth groups that would come to our, to the beach, you know, they come together, and, and I just, I remember they'd wear their little WWJD bracelets, and I'm like, just thought these people were just so stupid. Jesus brings me joy. I'm like, you just take your little joy and shove it up your ass. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> and so here I am. Jesus brings me joy. <laughs> and I mean it. And it's real. <laughs> More real than anything I've ever experienced in my entire life. Thank God for Jesus. First John, dang, okay. We're, all right, we're almost done. We're almost done. First John 4, 7, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might, be, we might live through him. See, these aren't just words for me. These sound like, I mean, those are just stupid words. They're just saying stuff to control you. No, these were... They're, they're liber if you can receive what these words are saying, don't receive the words, but receive where the words are coming from, what they actually are. Receive it, because I'm telling you, it's not words. It's an experience. It's a way of being. It's salvation. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. I'm alive because of him. I was dead before I met him. I'm alive now. And you can too. You can be alive too. You can come on home. You can come in the ivory tower where you get to experience the kingdom of God, heaven, when the whole world's in hell, suffering because of their own lies that they don't even know are lies. You can actually be free and just, and just get to watch the game and enjoy the game, everybody playing their little games and realize that it's, it's nothing. And you get to stay in joy. You get to stay in peace. You get to stay in love. You get to go first. You know, if you, your children don't learn by what you say, they learn by what you do if who here would love for your children to get to experience heaven heaven on earth well the only shot you got is you got to go first even if they don't go you got to go because it's got to be unconditional if it's not unconditional then it ain't it so everybody say i'm realizing i'm realizing i saw through eyes packed with lies i'm giving up lies that seemed real so i can have eyes that see what is real I'm leaving the dungeon of lies and entering the tower of truth. Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So 
how are you going to let the Christ mind become your mind when you're holding on to your own thoughts? You can't. You have to let go of your thoughts. Your mind has to be renewed. I know you believe that, but what you believe is what, is what you think you know that just ain't so is, what you keep, is what's keeping you from knowing what is so. You're holding on to things that you have to let go of. Genesis 12, 1, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. Not the land, I, I can't tell you about this land, but you have to let go of where you are and move forward. I, you've got to walk by faith, by, not by sight. I can't tell you about it because you've never seen this. You don't have a box for this. I can only show you, but the only way I can show you is if you let go of what you think that you know and follow the one who does know. I know everything beyond this world, beyond time, from the higher perspective. I'm in the afterlife. I'm in the after death. And I'm not, I'm, this, is, this is God speaking. From the highest perspective, there's things that you don't know. My ways are higher than your ways. You have to give up what you think that you know. I, I know how hard it is. I understand that. But it's time for you to understand that what you've been waiting for is here now but it's not going to come through the level. You can't solve a problem at the level of consciousness that created it. You have to give up your level of consciousness. You've got to give up your stinking thinking. You've got to give up all your beliefs, all of your thoughts. Isaiah 55 says, forsake what you thought. But I thought, but I thought, yeah, I know that's what you thought. And that's what was keeping you from what's true. What you thought is what kept you from what is true. Isaiah 55, forsake what you thought. Do what with what you thought? Forsake it. Cast it aside. I don't care how long you've been believing that bullshit. Now's the time to let it go. Forsake what you thought. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As heaven's are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So your actions are rooted in your thoughts. New reality requires new action. New action requires new thoughts. So God is not thinking what you're thinking. What you're thinking is the entire problem. God is, everybody say, God is not thinking what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is the problem. What's, what God's thinking is the solution. So uh, God's not thinking what you're thinking. His ways of getting you there are not your ways. God says, I swore I was going to bless you, but I didn't tell you how I was going to do it. I promised you were gonna, I was going to bless you. I swore to you, I promise, but I didn't tell you how I was going to do it. And you're blocking your blessing because of how you wanted me to do it. It's not going to be the way that you thought. God's plans always never make sense. Get your thoughts out of the way. Let me say, I surrender what I had in mind. I surrender what I had planned. I surrender how I thought it would turn out. God's plans always never make sense. 1 Corinthians 2, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. The, the, wisdom, the, the rulers of this age, the people that, that are the wisest, that are the ruling, that are supposed to be the best, they're coming to nothing. All of their best thinking comes to nothing. It's all for naught. I don't want nothing. I want everything. No, we, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. However, it is written, what, I, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. God can't tell you some things because you couldn't understand it but he can show you. But you've got to be willing to go in order for him to show. His answer is never gonna look like your prayers because you have no point of reference for what he's about to do. No one's ever seen this before. There's a method to what looks like madness. It's not cognitive, it's supernatural. Don't let your mind talk you back to where you've already been. 
You're going somewhere new. Your new life is going to cost you your old one, or your old life will cost you your new one. You've got to decide. Are you going to go forward, or are you going to be like Job's wife, who turned around and looked back and turned into a pillar of salt? Don't look back. Keep your eyes forward. God is making a new way. He's doing a new thing that's never been done before. And he's making you a new creation. You're not the same as you once were. You're two, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You're under no obligation to be the same person you were today as you were yesterday. In fact, you are commanded not to be. You're commanded. You are not allowed to be the same person yesterday as you are today. You're a new creation now when you receive Christ. All that gets washed away. That wasn't you. That was, that was an ignorant fool. And you're not an ignorant fool. You're a child of God. Royalty. Let your stupid stories go. They don't belong to you. They belong to a dead victim. Let the dead bury their dead. You are victorious. Everyone say, I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. And we say, I don't have the lying mind of Satan. I have the truthful mind of Christ. I'm no longer a slave to fear and sin. I'm a child of God. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. And the Son is setting me free. I'm free. All right, last one. 1 Corinthians 1. And we're going to end with this. We really are. We're ending now. 1 Corinthians 1, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The message of the cross is what? Foolish. Foolishness to who? Those who, those who are perishing. To the ones who are dying. Why are they dying? Because they got lies in their eyes that they believe to be true. They're coming to nothing because they don't have everything. So the ones who think Jesus hanging on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins is foolish are the foolish ones. And the wages of sin is death. Sin is not actually to be punished. It's the perception to be corrected. They still have the false perception. They're living in an upside down backwards world. They can't see what's actually real. They're looking through lies that they believe to be real. What you believe to be true is true for you, even if it's bullshit. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Welcome, John is here. <laughs> for, the, for the intelligence of the intelligent, I will use John to frustrate. <laughs> has anybody really smart people gotten frustrated by the stupidity that comes through my mouth that is actually genius? Fuck, Fuck Johnny. <laughs> Where is this wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it, it, is, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Give up yours and he'll give you his. And we'll say, I've given up mine so I can have God's. I'm giving up my story and receiving his story. My story is history. 
And his story is my new story. My story was that I was worthless. History says that he saved me because I'm worth it. I believe in history. All right, let's close our eyes and pray. Deep breath in. Let it all go. God, thank you for these things that seem so foolish because I thought I had to learn and earn my way into heaven. I thought I had to get good enough, but you used the foolish to shame the wise. You showed me that what I once called stupid was actually salvation, and what I called salvation was stupid. I thought my mind, what I knew was salvation, but it's not about what I know, it's not about what I think, it's about what you know, it's about what you think, and I give up what I think for what you think. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for remembering me even when I forgot who you created me to be. I gave up who I am, who I created to be, was created to be for who I thought I was supposed to be because I looked at this world and when I looked at this world, I saw myself as lacking, as not enough. And that was supposed to be because I wasn't created for this world. This world was created in lies. The world that I was born in, I was born into a, a sea of psychosis, of psychosis soup. And thank God when I looked at the world, I was lacking because the world was insane, still is. And so when the world sees me, they don't think that I'm enough. But because I know you, because I have you, I know you're enough. And because you're now in me, I am is enough in me. I don't need to learn anything else. I don't need to earn anything else. I just need you. And I receive you fully. Even if it costs me everything in this world, I don't care. This world doesn't matter to me anymore. Only you matter to me. Because you matter the most to me, I know that my world is going to start mattering around you. You're going to be mattering in my world more and more and more until my world is filled with only you, with only love, with only the kingdom of God. I don't know how that's going to happen, but that's none of my business. You already know. And I submit, I surrender, I yield, I place myself under your authority to use me as you wish. And I'm just going to enjoy the journey with graciousness and appreciation and gladness and joy, however you use me, however you don't use me, I receive you unconditionally. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, on earth as it is in heaven, so it is, amen. All right, so we'll end how we began. Who here is tired of living in a world full of sin and suffering? Who'd like to live in a world full of peace, love, and joy? Who here has plucked some lies out of your eyes over this journey we just did? So final uh, thought. I, I noticed uh, in this journey, I noticed storing up good stores up evil. When you do really good things in the world, you're doing the good, you're storing up the good, so you can, oh, look, look, I've got a bank account of goodness. Look how good I was. But every time you do that, you store up good, you store up evil. There's the opposite side of it. But what I, I saw in that is it's because you're storing up good is why you're storing up evil. But if you put good into circulation, there's no more storage of good or storage of evil. You just go into the circulation and you get to receive the present of the present because it's all God. There's no need to store up good when you've got God. You're only storing up good because you don't got God. And when you store up good, you store up evil. But when you've got God, good go, the, the goodness of God goes into circulation of this world through you. And how this happens, how you put good into circulation and dissolve evil is with thank you and you're welcome. What are the words? Thank you, thank you and you're welcome. So it's, it's in circulation. Someone does something great for you, thank you. And then they say, you're welcome. It's in circulation. We both received it. 
But if someone says thank you and you don't receive it, you don't, you don't say you're welcome, you're storing up the good, which means you're storing up the bad, and that bad will come and get your ass. Just say you're welcome. Don't make it weird. Let's put good into circulation. Let's put God into circulation. So here, so let's, uh, let's do the, let's give the ultimate thanks for the ultimate sacrifice. So let's all say, thank you, Jesus, for taking my place. Thank you, God, for giving me grace. Thank you both for sending your spirit. And God says to you, you're welcome. Jesus says to you, you're welcome. And the Holy Spirit says to you, you're welcome. You're welcome that I'm here with you now. And then now we all say to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we say back, hey, you're, you're welcome that I received you fully because I know you've been looking for for hearts, but they've all been hardened. And you finally found fertile soil in me. It's in giving that we receive and it's in receiving that we give. I'm gonna give to you right now by receiving you fully. And God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you're welcome that I received your unconditional gift. Everyone say that. God, you're welcome that I receive your unconditional gift. And then feel God's heart smiling like you smile whenever you give a gift to someone and they receive it fully and with gratitude. And now God is so glad that you received his gift that meant everything to him and now it means everything to you too. And now it's complete. Now the balance is restored. The gift that meant everything to him now means everything to you and now the balance is restored. We've returned home to the kingdom with God. As children of God, we inherit the kingdom and we receive our crown as royalty. Great job, everybody. All right, so um, uh, we got the Remember Experience coming up. If you can hear my voice right now, get your ass on down here to the Remember Experience so you can experience uh, God's kingdom being established in the physical dimension on earth as it is in heaven. Come on down here. Get to remember who your true self is. Uh, go to rememberexperience.com. Register for your, your spot. Uh, get down here no matter what. Don't let no, don't let no Goliath stop you. Bust through those Goliaths and, and get yourself down here. Uh, get your true self down here. You will remember your true self when you're down here. Uh, also, if you feel called to make any donations, tithes and donations, we are a nonprofit. Go to bridgebucksbank.com. Uh, sow seeds into there. Bridge Bucks Bank is God's bank. Uh, B-A-N-K is an acronym. It's not a bank of the old world. It's a bank of God's kingdom. It's just, it's an acronym. Beliefs assi- align with uh, natural kinship. It is a uh, private membership uh, association as an auxiliary of a 508 C1A. So go in there. And so, and then once you make a donation, make sure you go and set up your own Bridge Bucks Bank account because it's helped, that's, that's the bridge between Babylon and the new earth. So you can start uh, giving and receiving inside of the new earth, even if you're still physically inside of Babylon. And then also, if you're watching this online, make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, and go to earthwakingvillage.com and, reg- and uh, plug into our virtual village. And, and then find the Awakened Spiritual Gathering. We meet every Sunday morning at 1130 Central Time. So come on to the, we'd love to see here live via Zoom or in person, but you'll find all those details at earthwakingvillage.com under the Awakened Spiritual Gathering. All right, and uh, with that, I... Love you all. I'm going to end the recording and then I'm going to hang out with the people that are here live. But uh, love you all. Appreciate you. Who you are makes the difference. The world is a much better place because you exist. And remember, you get to decide. Are you going to live through real lies? Lies coming out of your mouth and covering your eyes? Or are you going to look through real eyes and see the truth? You get to decide. Let's all pick on some real eyes. Let's get some real eyes. Let's let go. Let's, let's take the lies out of our eyes and know the truth. The truth will set us free. So we received that today. Nurture these seeds of truth and keep growing them and then keep sowing them. Share them with the world. Share this message with the world. Uh, share the message of Jesus, the good news that, hey, your, your debt's clean, you're clear. You can pluck, pluck the lies out of your eyes. You can come on home now. Love you guys. See you all next, see you next week. <laughs>